Hi, XNA Game Programmer. I'd like to introduce you to Jake. Jake is a great dog. So great that he deserves a full screen treatment and a tutorial dedicated to showing you how to display an image of him on the screen. In this tutorial, you're going to add content to a game project and utilize appropriate classes to load and use those content resources. You're going to construct rectangle objects to position and size an image on the screen. And you're going to manipulate the position of an image using a user input control scheme. All right, well, let's create a new project. You can click New Project here on the Start page or go to File, New Project. And we're going to make a Windows game 4.0. And the name of this project will be Jake Display. And it's going to be in the Projects folder of the Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio 2010 folder in the Documents folder. Click OK. So here's my Jake Display project. Or is it? Actually, we created new, we clicked new project, but we get this thing called a solution. And if you go to the actual folder that holds your game, here, Jake Display, and you open it up, you get this thing called a Visual Studio Solution. And then you get this other folder, Jake Display and Jake Display Content. What's going on here? is that XNA has, cre has created the solution and added a single project to that solution. Both the solution and the project are called Jake Display. A solution can hold multiple projects. And a project, like our Jake Display project, can hold multiple files, like it does here. A game1.cs file, as well as a program.cs file, along with other things that we'll talk about later like this game icon. Now what we want to do is add our Jake image to our project. And we do that by adding it as an existing item to our content management pipeline. The content management pipeline is what controls the access to our resources. Right click on Jake Display Content, go to Add, and go to Existing Item. Hopefully you already have the Jake picture. Here I have the Jake picture stored in my pictures library. Click on it and click add. So now you see jake.jpg in my uh, under Jake display content. So it's in the content pipeline now. If you navigate to your actual game folder, and I have mine in my documents, Visual Studio 2010, Projects, Jake Display. Open that up and then open up the content folder. You'll actually see a copied version of that picture. Pause the video and add the image. The next thing that we want to do is create a Texture 2D variable at the top of our Game1.cs class to represent the image. XNA treats content just like variables. We assign a type and identifier, and then we do as we wish. The name of the class that represents an image is Texture 2D. And we're going to call it Pick. That's going to be the reference or the identifier for our jake.jpg file. The next thing we need to do is we need to load the picture. So we're actually going to use the load content method now. Here's load content. We actually already see a line of code in load content. This line of code constructs a sprite batch object. The sprite batch is something that we're going to use later on to actually draw the image on the screen. Now to load the Jake picture, we type pick equals content dot load load is a generic method 
Load can load many different types of content resources. Sound effects, songs, even videos. In this case, we, will, we want to load a Texture 2D. Here, we type in a string representing the Texture 2D's name. Its name is Jake. Note that we don't type .jpg. Let me press F6 to compile, and you'll notice that the build succeeded. If I were to type jake.jpg, which is a common mistake, and try to compile, the build will succeed as well, but when I try to run it, I get an error. And it's saying it can't find that file. That's because I'm supposed to just type Jake and not the .jpg. That goes the same for any other extensions as well. So I press Shift F5 to get out of this, and I'll delete the .jpg. Pause the video and add this code. The next thing we need to do is create a rectangle to hold our image on the screen. A rectangle is used to not only position the image on the screen, but also size the image. Let's create a rectangle variable up at the top. Let's call it pick rec. The next thing we need to do is we need to construct our rectangle in the initialize method. So here let's make pick rec equal to new rectangle. The rectangle constructor takes in four arguments. The first two arguments represent the x and y of the top left corner of the rectangle. That's how the rectangle is positioned. What we want to do is place the rectangle in the top left portion of the screen so we're going to pick 0 comma 0. The next two numbers represent the width and height of the rectangle. Let's pick 200 comma 200 semicolon. Now one thing you need to know about x and y coordinates in a game screen is that it's different from a normal graph. Take a look at this diagram. Here I'm showing a normal xy coordinate plane, but the 0, 0 point is in the top left corner, and actually as you go down, the y goes up. When we're dealing with game design, when we go further down on the screen vertically, we're actually going up in the y direction. The x direction luckily for us is the same where when we go to the right it's more positive so for this particular rectangle where is the top left corner located at think about it their answer is 1 comma 2 well what is the width and height of the rectangle Think about that. The width is 3 and the height is 2. Now that we've constructed our rectangle, we can use it to actually draw. Pause the video and add this code. All right. So let's actually get the image to show up on the screen. Go down to the draw method. Remember that the draw method handles all the displaying of images and colors on the screen. And the first thing I want you to type in is sprite batch dot begin. Remember the sprite batch is the object that we're going to use for drawing. Type in sprite batch dot draw 
And you'll see that IntelliSense tells us that oh, there are actually seven different versions of the sprite batch dot draw method. The particular version we want is version one. It takes in three parameters, a texture, a rectangle, and the color. So the name of my texture 2D is pick. The name of the rectangle is pick rec. And so what happens here is that whatever the raw image size is of the jake.jpg picture, it will be fit to the rectangle pick rec, which has been initialized to 0, 0, which is the location of the rectangle, and thus the location of the picture, but also a width of 200 and a height of 200, pick rec. The last thing is a color. To display the image with its normal color, we're going to pick color.white. If you want to overlay the color of the image with some other color, pick a different color. Just not color.black unless you don't want to see the picture. The last thing we need to do is sprite batch dot end. and we're ready to see Jake on the screen. Pause the video and add this code. Press F5, let's see what happens. Oh, there's Jake. But you know what? At the beginning of the tutorial, I said that Jake deserves a full screen treatment. So how do we get Jake to show up and be stretched to the full screen? Let's do that now. To draw Jake as a full screen image, we need to resize the rectangle to represent the full screen. Go to the initialize method, and here we see that the width of the rectangle is currently 200, and the height is 200. We need to change the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle to match the width of the screen and the height of the screen. To do that, we'll use the graphics device. Type in graphics device. And we want to ask the graphic device for the viewport. And we specifically want the viewport's width. Let's do the same thing. But instead of width, we'll type in height. Don't you love IntelliSense? That's it. That's all we had to do to get Jake to be drawn as a full screen image. So whatever your screen is sized to, width and height, by typing in graphics device .viewport .width, that represents the width of the screen and this represents the height. Pause the video and add this code. Press F5 and let's see what happens. There's Jake, full screen. Isn't he great? Well, we still need to figure out how to manipulate the position of an image using the keyboard and gamepad. So let's go to the update method here. And what I've already done is that I've already set Jake's picture back from full screen to just the 0, 0, 200, 200 rectangle. So he isn't full screen anymore, as you see from this run right here. But Jake won't mind, because Jake's going to learn how to move here. So he's OK with this. We're in the update method, and we're going to use the gamepad first. So let's go ahead and create a gamepad state. Call it pad1, and it's going to, equal, e it's going to be equal to gamepad.getState, uh, which gamepad? Player index dot one. I already have my controller plugged in. 
there we go and I'm simply going to say if pad1 dot dpad dot up is equal equal button state dot pressed I'm going to want my Jake picture to go up. Now remember what I said about the way X and Y is laid out in a um, in a game screen. The Y going down in the picture vertically is actually increasing in number. So therefore if I'm going up I'm decreasing in number and what I need to do here is I need to decrease the Y value of the rectangle. So pick rec dot y minus minus. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this right below and paste another and paste another because I have to handle all four directions and I'm just going to go down there and change this to plus plus. I'm going to turn this to the left and make that go x minus minus and this is going to be right and x plus plus. So the x direction in a game screen is the same thing compared to what you're used to. Pause the video and add this code. Let's press F5 and see how this works. All right. Here is my picture moving around on the screen based on my gamepad input. Now most of us don't have gamepad, so I'm going to show you how to work this using a keyboard as well. Go back to your code. And underneath the gamepad code, let's type in the keyboard code. Keyboard state, we'll call it keys, is equal to keyboard. Dot get state, and in this case, I don't have to specify which keyboard because there's only one. My if statements are going to be set up similarly, except I'm not going to be asking the gamepad whether a up or down button is being pressed. Instead, I'm going to ask the keyboard. So if keys dot is key down, I'm going to use the arrows, the the arrow keys keys, VK keys, keys dot, and I'm going to look for up, and up here is the up arrow, pick rec dot y minus minus, so that's good, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it here, and here, and here, and I'm going to pay close attention to changing the appropriate parts. Y plus plus, in this case I'm going down, so let me pick down. And X minus minus, in that case I'm going left. That's the left arrow, and this is the right arrow. Press F5. This time I'm going to use the keyboard. Wait a second, it doesn't like something. Let's find out what the problem is. Oh yes. Extra set of parentheses. You gotta be careful with that. And now I'm using the arrow keys and everything's cool. Alright, so now we know how to move an image on the screen using the gamepad and the keyboard. Pause the video and add this code. Well, in conclusion, you've learned how to add content to a game project and utilize appropriate classes to load and use the resources. You've learned how to construct rectangle objects to position and size an image on the screen. And lastly, you've learned how to manipulate the position of an image using a user input control scheme.